Hi, my name is Phil and I've been asked to kick off the series of videos that we're going to be using um, as part of our 40 day reflection series in the church. And this is week one, looking at how God restores our soul. Psalm 23, just the introduction. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So begins the most famous psalm, famous not just in church circles, but in the world. The psalm is clearly a powerfully symbolic piece of poetry, and most of us could probably quote at least some of it. For this first in our 40 day series, I'd like to focus on just these three verses. What is it that in these three verses alone can help us be restored? What is the key to being restored? And how can we personally find restoration for our soul? It's not too difficult to find the answer. In the way the poem is written out in the Bible, after the first line, every line in the first three verses starts with the same word, he. This psalm is clearly designed to lead us continually to him, to God, to Jesus. As Jesus himself stated, I am the good shepherd. You see, although to the world's ears, the psalm does indeed sound beautiful and promises things that we would all desire, we, you and I, have the completely overwhelming privilege of actually knowing personally that shepherd, Jesus Christ. How amazing is that? The Lord is my shepherd. We can at times push Jesus out of his rightful place as Lord in our hearts. We try and wrest back control of our lives, especially if we aren't enjoying the place where he's leading us. Because we push him away, we lose that deep sense of inner peace and contentment. And we start to look at other things to bring peace and contentment. Maybe browsing Facebook Marketplace, looking for the perfect thing that will make us happy and content again or looking for the perfect Netflix series that will, that will fulfil us, or maybe even alcohol, or worse. Hopefully, though, we soon realise that we've left the best for a very poor substitute, which won't even satisfy or bring that peace that we've been missing. When we finally come back to our senses and realise that it's not working, we come back to Jesus. Each time it's humbling, and it can be difficult. But once we've made this right decision to come back, confess how silly we've been, he will gladly come back into his rightful place as Lord and Shepherd of our hearts and will bring back that depth of peace and contentment that we missed so much. He'll never be scornful of us coming us back. He will always just delight to return to be the Lord of our life again. John Piper has said that God is most glorified when we are most satisfied in him. That means that basically that the world or non-Christians will see Jesus in us as we are finding our peace and contentment in him. We should be then be ready to give an answer to the world when they ask, well, how can you be so at peace in the midst of all this turmoil around us? I shall not want. When we were serving as missionaries abroad, we saw so clearly how God supplied all our needs. We didn't have any income apart from donations and support from friends and churches. But when we know Jesus, we can be absolutely confident in him that he will supply everything we need to live the life he has called us to. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. There are lots of apps these days promising to help us find calm with our anxieties. Whilst they may go some way to helping, they're nothing in comparison to what we find in Jesus. None of them will give us that deep sense of peace that Jesus gives, that unsearchable peace, or the peace that is beyond understanding. It's a great visual to think about, green pastures and still waters. These, though, aren't so much a place, but what we find in the person of Jesus. He himself is the green pasture and the still water. In him, we find ourselves being at rest and being refreshed. Jesus himself says in Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30 
Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. What a promise. Everything is found in Jesus. He is our green pasture, and he is our refreshing water. He restores my soul. As we've just been reading what Jesus calls us to do, the end result is always the same. Restoration. There can be nothing else in Jesus. He is the restorer of the hurt, the wounded, the damaged and the broken. It's his character to repair and to heal. Notice he doesn't ask those who've got it all together to come to him. No, he invites us who know we are weak, damaged and hurt, as mentioned earlier. He responds to needs and as we come to him with our needs, he runs towards us and meets us in our needs. Our shepherd is a loving and caring shepherd who can see the paths and the valleys ahead and knows what we need to go through in order to go through these. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. After restoring and reviving us, it's back to walking the paths and doing the works that he's chosen for us. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should work in them. Walk in them, sorry. Keeping ourselves in him and seeking to faithfully serve him in our world. It's so easy to enjoy him for ourselves and forget that he also wants others to find the peace and contentment that we have found. So let's be ready to share him with others.